Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is August 22nd, 2024. And today we're gonna talk about the state of the financial fair play of FC Barcelona. Also, the club have reached an agreement for the transfer of Mika Fai. And finally, it's reported that Barcelona are holding off on signing Chiesa until they hear a final answer in regards to Rafael Leao. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mo and before we begin with the news just a quick reminder to make sure to hit that like button Subscribe to the channel and drop a comment all of this helps this channel continue to grow Also, if you are looking for any Barcelona jerseys or merchandise Make sure you hit the goal kit skip back or fanatics and if you are looking to place any sports bets Make sure you hit the bet us all links Are down below in the description now we will begin this video by discussing the current state of the financial fair play of Barcelona as today, Mundo Deportivo published a very detailed article of what's going on with Barcelona's financial fair play. And since I have gotten a lot of questions from you guys, I decided to address it. So let's start by talking about what the financial fair play of Barcelona currently looks like. Now, as we know, Barcelona are not under the one-to-one -one rule yet. And even though Barcelona just offloaded two players, Ilkay Gundogan going back, to Manchester City on a free transfer but clearing a big wage off Barcelona's bill and Vito Roque of course going to Real Betis on loan. Despite these two most recent exits, Barcelona have not reached the one-to-one -one rule and the biggest problem in all of this is of course the Barca Vision deal. Now Barcelona sold part of Barca Vision for 200 million euros uh, to Libero, 40 million euros were supposed uh, were initially received by the club, so 40 out of 200. The remaining 160 were unpaid. 40 million out of those 160 were supposed to come in December. They were not paid. The other 60 million were supposed to come in June. They were also not paid. And then there's a remaining 40 million euros that are supposed to arrive next summer, 2025. And of course, most likely that's not going to arrive either. And this is what has thrown off Barcelona's financial fair play. And this is why Barcelona are not under the one-to-one -one rule. Now, Barcelona recently did reach an agreement with Aramark, which is the company in charge of catering of the Spotify camp. Now, Barcelona reached an agreement with Aramark so they can cover part of this money that they haven't received from the German investment fund Libero for the sale of Barca Vision. And Aramark have only covered 25 million euros so far. So this, of course, has not been enough for Barcelona to reach the one-to-one -one rule. Now, one key player or one key thing in all of this for Barcelona to reach the one-to-one -one will be the transfer of Clément Lenglet, who does have an incredibly high salary right now, close to uh, 16 or 18 million euros gross. And Barcelona will need to offload Clément Lenglet, whether it be on loan or on sale, in order to achieve their goals as far as their registrations. Now, since Barcelona are not under the one-to-one -one rule, if they offload a player, whether it be on loan or on sale, they can only use 60% of his salary towards registering uh, another player. If they sell him, they can use 60% of the salary plus 20% of the amount of sale. If the player is a franchise player, means that that player's salary is at least 5% or higher of the total wage bill, then if Barcelona offload that player, like Ilkay Gundogan, then you can, they can use 70% of the salary of that player to register someone else, or 35%, I'm sorry, and 35% of the final sale price if the player is offloaded and not loaned. And since Barcelona are not the under one-to-one -one rule. If they do offload Lenglet, they would only be able to use 60% of his salary to register someone new. So that's around 11.2, 11.4 million euros. Now, when you combine all of this, the offloading of Gundo, Vitor Roque, Mika Fai, Clement Lenglet, plus the previous players that Barcelona have already offloaded, like Marguiou, Shadir Yad, uh, Uriol Romeo, um, that two Joao's, even though they didn't offload them, but they took their salaries off their bill. There's Julian Araujo and the Armark deal. All of this combined will help Barcelona achieve all of the registrations, including registering Dani Olmo 
and the remaining players that Barcelona have yet to register. So hopefully this did clarify things for you. If you have more questions, let me know in the comment section. Of course, I'll be happy to answer them. And since we did mention Clément Lenglet, it's being reported that Barcelona are considering another alternative, which would be to extend the contract of the player in order to amortize or in order to reduce the expense of the player because Clément Lenglet does have a contract until 2026. He's set to earn around 16 million per season. So that's 32 million total that Barcelona have to pay for him over the, over the course of two years. But it's reported that Barcelona could be considering extending his contract until 2028. That way deferring his salary. And instead of paying a 32 million total for Lenglet in two years, they will be paying it over the course of four years. So that's 8 million euros per year. So that of course reduces Barcelona's obligations under the financial fair play clearing more space on the wage bill to register other players. And this is similar to what Atletico Madrid did right before they loaned Joao Felix to us. They extended his contract in order to, you know, divide his salary over more years, reducing his impact on their wage bill, and then they loaned him out to us. But it's being reported that even though Barcelona are considering this, Lenglet is not too in favor of this move because Atletico Madrid are in a hurry to sign Lenglet. They want to, he's their chosen one to reinforce a back line and they are in a hurry to sign him and as such he's not too in favor of trying to you know go into negotiations with Barcelona get the whole contracts everything signed and then start negotiating with Atletico Madrid but of course it's not completely ruled out so we're gonna have to wait and see what happens with Lingley's contract now speaking of defenders it is reported that Barcelona have reached an agreement for the transfer of Mika Five. Now, Mika Five failed to convince Hansi Flick during the preseason and with Barcelona's need to offload players and with the center back position being one of those positions that is plenty covered, Barcelona decided that Mika Five would be one of those players that would be offloaded this summer. And as I reported in yesterday's video, Mika Five had three offers, one from Rennes, one from Lille, and one from PSV Eindhoven that had joined the race during the late hours. But now it's reported that Mika Fai has chosen his next destination and it's no other than Rennes in the Ligue 1 who have offered Barcelona 12 million euros for Mika Fai, which is not a bad operation because Barcelona did sign him for 1.5 and they're selling him for 12 million. So pretty good profit for Barcelona. And on top of all of that, Barcelona were successful in including a buyback clause in the contract of Fai worth 35 million euros so if Barcelona want to re-sign him down the road they would have to pay 35 and they'd be able to bring him back to the club and also they were able to include a sell-on clause of 25 percent so if Rennes sell Mika Fire next season or whenever Barcelona could earn 25 percent of that transfer fee now we will end today's video with the news that states that Barcelona have yet to make a move for Chiesa because they're still awaiting a response in regards to Rafael Leao. Now we know that Federico Chiesa is on his way out of Juventus. He only wants to come to Barcelona. In fact, he has paused negotiations with all other clubs in Europe and he's even informed Barcelona that he's willing to reduce his salary to come to the Blaurana club. And since Barcelona think that they can sign him for around 10 million euros and the fact that he's 26 years old, he's a specialist on the left wing, he can play on both wings. He's willing to reduce his salary. Barcelona do think that this is a good operation to complete. However, it's reported that they have yet to make a move because they're still waiting on an official response in regards to Rafael Leao. Now, as we know, Deco reached out to AC Milan through Jorge Mendes to figure out, to see, you know, what can Barcelona do if there's any possibility of signing Rafael Leao. Of course, Mendes has yet to respond to Deco, and it's reported that until Deco receives an actual no or an actual it, this is impossible, he's not going to make a move for Federico Chiesa because it looks like he first wants to see what are Barcelona's chances of signing Leao, which, you know, I don't know why he's waiting for a response. If Deco wants, I can pick up the phone and call him myself because I'm here to tell you that this operation is pretty much impossible. In fact, media in AC Milan are saying that AC Milan have completely ruled out any move for Leao, that it's too late in the market. It's the 22nd of August. There's only a few days left for the market. Maybe if Barcelona had approached AC Milan last month, then maybe AC Milan would have been willing to negotiate. But this late in the market, there's no way, absolutely not, that they're letting Leao go. And even if they were, again, they want around 130 to 150 million euros. 
which is not possible for Barcelona given the financial situation of the club. Anyways, that is all the news for this video. I did upload a video earlier today. Make sure to check it out. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment, and as always, Bisca Barça.